Hi, Jane here again from Think Smart Accounting. Just coming back to you with that additional video, just going into some more detail on settings for payroll, um, adding in superannuation, uh, how to uh, apply for leave, and a few other things. We'll, we'll see what we come across when we start digging into some settings. So uh, once again, I've got the screencast going here. Uh, we're using a demo company again, so everything you see is not real, so all fake um, information. So to get to settings, Xero's recently changed this, so um, it used to be up the top here, but now we've got to click on your organisation name and go to settings. So here you can see payroll settings, we'll click on that. All right, there's a bit of information here, so what's here? Normally you don't, you don't fiddle around with this kind of stuff that's up here. Uh, yeah, those accounts are automatically set, so we don't normally touch those. Uh, this payroll tracking, I've never used that myself. Uh, that's something you might use if you've got a big company and you've got different departments. That's where employee groups might come into its own. Same as timesheets. You can brand your uh, pay slips with your own logo. The one that's on there automatically is just the zero logo. Uh, options, show annual salary, show employment basis. I'd probably like to have those both ticked if it was me. So we'll have those both ticked, hit save. All right, calendars, what is calendar? Fortnightly, weekly. Okay, so the calendars. Uh, so I'm assuming fortnightly and weekly automatically input in there. So quite often people ask me, I don't want it to be Monday to Friday. I want it to be Thursday to Wednesday or uh, Wednesday to Tuesday. So they can pay people sort of in the middle of the week rather than doing a doing pays on a Friday and the, the employees don't get their money until Monday, uh, worst case scenario if the bank's a bit slow. So um, that's when we can edit these or you can add a new one. All right, so we'll just do a weekly one. Obviously, you know, you can select something different um, as, as like for your own needs. We'll give it a name. So, like I said, quite often the ones that it comes with are just Monday to Friday uh, pays. So, we could rename this weekly um, Thursday to Wednesday. We'll start it. Um, just backdate it um, last Thursday. And the first payment date will be this Thursday. Make it my default calendar. And then we can see that that's been added in, added in there. So I'll just continue to go through these tabs here. So holidays. Okay, so this is quite handy. So what this is, not sure why, can I type it in? Okay, so we'll just type in Christmas. Christmas holidays and the date is going to be the 25th 
and we add that in there and then we could add in um, we could do Christmas as again or we could name it Boxing Day if you wanted to call it Boxing Day so I think this is actually a new feature since last time I've been into payroll so you could go through you could go through the whole year add in all your Christmas um, anytime you might be shut so over Christmas Australia Day Easter holidays you you could add all all of those in so if you've got full-time employees you're gonna pay them through the public holidays so yeah, if they happen to take leave, which a lot of people will extend their leave over Christmas and Easter, uh, that will automatically, what's the best way to explain this? It'll, instead of, instead of putting in a week's leave for somebody and you having to manually take out the 25th and the 26th from that one week of leave, that will do it automatically. All right, so in the past, I know I've had to do it um, when we've been shut for two weeks. I've got to manually um, edit leave. So make sure people are still paid ordinary hours rather than leave on the public holidays. So the 25th and the 26th when it's um, Christmas and, and New Year's Day, of course. So that's what that is. So that seems like Seems like a pretty handy feature to me, so I'd be, I'd be setting that up for sure. Um, might take a bit of time now, but in the long run, um, that'll work out really well. So pay items, pay items, okay, so. This is where, um, when we did that pay template, uh, we could select um, the hours lines or the earnings lines that that people would would be on so Like I said ordinary hours is the main one um, The other one is overtime and you can see How the rate um, How the rate is calculated so this one overtime is 1.5 times um, an employee's rate so you could edit that or um, we could add in another one. So we could add in an a new overtime. Your overtime might be double time. So we do overtime, we just name it overtime double, double time, overtime, rate type, Probably just a rate per unit. So hours, and we just input this um, every every week or whenever your pay pay run is. Uh, you just enter the hours in manually every time you edit the pay run, payroll. You can put in the rate if you want. So rate per unit. Um, you know, maybe if they're on $25 an hour and it's double time, it might be $50. Expense account. Expense account would just normally be, um, everyone's is different. So if we've set it up for you, um, it's not going to look like this. We would normally have a wages um, payable payroll account. So for this demo company, it would be wages and salaries. All right, so exempt from PAYG withholding. Look, this is going to vary, vary for each person. So depending on your circumstances, um, whether it's excluded from tax or superannuation, um, probably best to check with the accountant on that one. And we'd hit save. And then you should be able to see that that's added in there. All right. 
Same as whether this is reportable as W1, you, you might want to check with your accountant or HR officer. Right. So that's earnings. This is where you can add in the deductions or the reimbursements and things like that. But I don't know, I don't think they're commonly used, so I'm not going to go into it in this video. The leave, once again, we don't normally need to edit leave. Uh, generally what it comes with is, is fine. So you can see here, like I said um, in my previous video, that annual leave is normally 152 hours and sick leave is 76. That's for a full-time employee doing 38 hours a week. So, superannuation, this is really important. So whenever you get a super fund from your employer, employee, this is where you go to add it in, into the payroll settings. So we click on add superannuation fund. Most of the time it's going to be a regulated superannuation fund. Um, but yeah, if they've got a self-managed one, you select that and enter in the um, bank account details for that one there. Regulated, you need uh, the USI or just the fund name. Xero actually has a whole list of superannuation funds. So if you don't know the USI, you can generally, um, generally find it here. There's a whole heap if we even just type in Australian. But you will need their employer number. No, oh, no. Sorry, that employer number is optional. That's to do with um, you as an employer. So I've never used that myself. So um, continuing on from the superannuation stuff. Um, when we are in payroll, um, what does this say? Okay, so that if you go payroll superannuation, that's where you uh, can make your automatic superannuation payment. We're just going to check um, when you add in somebody's super fund. We go back to their name, go to employment, I think it was. Employment and we'd add that here. And that is where we would type in their employee number. And that's really important um, that you get that one right because that's the number um, that the super fund uses to identify who you're paying. I'm just going to show you how to add in leave for somebody. So what we would do uh, under payroll employees, we click, you find the employee that you want, then click on leave and go new leave request. The type, we'd select annual leave if it's a holiday. Um, you've got personal carers leave if they've been sick as well. We're just going to do annual leave. Type in the description. The date, so let's say it's next week for a week. Approve. So Jane Smith hasn't accumulated any leave, so it's negative at the moment, but normally um, their leave would accrue and that would just reduce down every time, every time they take leave and they, they can keep track of that as well. All right, so I think that's it for now. All right, so 
Uh, that's it for today. The next video I want to show you is how to pay somebody. Um, so, yeah, how to actually do a um, pay run, what used to be called a pay run, which is now called pay employee. So, next video, which will be really, really simple and quick, um, we'll go through how to how to do a pay and how to pay people, email pay slips, invite them to my payroll. So that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.